Zoho CRM tutorial, how to use Zoho CRM. Hey guys, welcome back. Now, if you're looking to get started with Zoho, it is a great platform for both CRM and they have a bunch of other solutions for your business as well. They have a super reasonable pricing system and are super easy to get started with. So let's get into it. Now, the first thing you want to do is head on over to Zoho.com and you want to click on sign in or log in on the top right. If you don't have an account, you can go back and type in your basic information such as your full name, email, and password, and then get started with a new account. So we're just going to click on get started over here and we're going to sign in. So once you have signed in, this is going to be your basic dashboard. You guys can see on your dashboard on the top, you have a toolbar. In this toolbar, you can find all of your CRM features, including your leads, contacts, accounts, deals, tasks, meetings, activities, projects, and other items. So within your Zoho CRM, you will see a free upgrade option. You can choose to get a free trial of the Zoho CRM tools and upgrade to a premium plan to include more features for free. Now. On the right side of your screen, you will find your profile where you can have your own profile set up. Then you have your marketplace and then you have some basic setup options. In your setup options, it includes things such as your users, channels, customizations, automations, marketplaces, and more. So if you want to optimize any particular channel, you can go into email over here. And once you go into email, you will be able to see all of the basic emails you have, what kind of settings you have set for emails, the fonts we're using, the default email address that our emails are going to be sent from, and then your email deliverability. So this includes things such as your email status and authentication status. Now, keep in mind in your email configuration, it has a default address. This default address should preferably be of a business email rather than a regular email because people trust emails that are coming from a business rather than personal emails whenever they are managing their tickets. Now, moving on to the next section, let's get started with actually setting up some leads and some projects. So the thing you have to do is on your top left, you want to click on leads. Once you click on leads, you will be able to see all of your potential customers or pre-existing customers. Now on the left side of your screen, you have filtration methods. So you can filter out a particular type of lead. Let's say I'm only looking for people that have previously converted into an account. So I can click on converted account or converted contact and only view those people. Now to add my particular leads, all I have to do is click on create lead on the top right. This is a blue button. Now you also have a drop down button with it. And if you click on import leads, you can also do a bulk import in the form of a CSV or XLSX file. Now, if you already have set up CRM on a previous platform, you can also import from there as well. However, I do recommend saving a CSV file of your leads if you already have them. However, even if you don't, you can go back into the lead section and click on create lead. Once you click on create lead, you can manually input all of the information regarding that lead. So first thing what you want to do is add the lead owner. This is going to be the potential person that has brought this lead to your business or the person that is dealing with this lead. Now, after that, you can add the first name and then you can add the title. Then after that, you also have your lead source. So let's say this is a cold call. And then let's say that this is a wireless industry. The annual revenue they're bringing is about $2,000. And then below that, you have your address information and any other descriptive information you want to add. Now, other than the lead info, on the right side, you will actually find company info. So you can begin by adding their company name. And then you can add their email address, their website, the status of the lead. So the status of the lead is going to show you whether or not you have made contact, whether or not you currently have this lead and this customer is currently in contact and they are potentially making a deal with you or whether they are not. So let's say this lead is um, contacted and then let's say the number of employees they have is two and then the rating is going to be active. So currently I haven't acquired the lead, but it's an active lead. And then you can add any secondary information. Now, once the information about your lead is completed, you can choose to add a lead image on the top left as well, and then click on save on the top right. 
In this way, you can manually add your leads and you can manage leads with more information as well. You will see once you have saved a lead, on the left side of your screen, it will have different options. These options include adding attachments, so any relevant files of previous deals that you have made, any open activities, emails, invited meetings, campaigns, or any previous work that you're doing in conjunction to this particular person or their business can be seen over here. This helps you in categorizing information from the same business into one bulk of information rather than separating it from person to person. Now, moving on to our next section, we have contacts. So if you click on contact over here, there are a few samples that we have. Now, contacts are more illustrative of people that you've already acquired. And you will see in your contact section, the basic layout is pretty much going to be the same. Other than that, you only have a different item of where you acquired them. Those items are not present within contacts. Those are only present within leads because contacts are people that are already present within your business or are already in business with your business. You guys can see as a example, let's take a look at this particular contact. We have this contact, their department, their deal, the contact information, any notes as well as any deals that we created with them can be viewed over here. Now, after you have dealed with your contacts, you can go into accounts. Now, your accounts are going to be usually linked to a particular contact and they can be linked to multiple contacts as well. If it's an account, a larger account, you might have multiple different contacts working on it. So just as an example, let's take a look at one of these accounts. Now this account is going to be present for a particular business. Now let's say I can click on create account on the top right and then you can fill out the basic information for that account. Now, within accounts, there are going to be deals. Deals are going to be the items that you are going to fulfill for the other business. So if you go into deals over here, you can categorize them in this Kanban view. However, you can also click on the top right over here and click on list view. So this is a list view of all your deals. To create a deal, simply click on create deal on the top right. And once you click on create deal, you can enter a deal name like this now after you've entered the deal name you're obviously going to link it to a particular account because that's the person that is handling it so let's say it's going to be this particular account and this is going to be our existing business this is not new business so we're already working with this particular business in the past then you can enter the next step now this is going to be whatever you're doing for it a you know goal oriented step you can enter that over here now you're going to add the lead source, the contact name. So who is the person that you're in contact with? You're going to add that particular person over here. So let's say it's this person. Now after that, we're going to add the amount and then the closing date of this particular deal or you know when this deal was finalized. So you can add that particular date, like 11 October, let's say it's that. Now after that, you have your stage. So let's say we've already provided our value proposition and our probability of acquiring this deal is 90%. Now, after that, you can also see the expected revenue and then the campaign source. So how did you actually um, particularly get this deal and which campaign led to this particular deal? After that, you can also include some more descriptive information and then click on save on the top right to create your deal. Now, you will see that for each individual deal, you have multiple different stage items. So you will see that you have your qualification, need analysis, value proposition, identified decision makers, proposal slash price code, negotiation or review, and then whether or not it was closed or lost or lost to a competitor. Let's say I just get a call right now that our deal was accepted. I don't have to go over all of these steps. I can simply click on the icon over here and I can click on closed one and click on save and then our deal would be directly moved to the closed one section. Now, after deals, you also have some other features, including tasks. So in tasks, it's a lot easier for you to manage your own personal items for your own employees, where you can create tasks for a particular 
contact or lead and you can add a particular account or campaign as well this is going to help you in achieving the goals that you're setting for your deals and negotiations with other businesses so in this way you can get started with zoho crm it's affordable and a great way for you to manage your business and manage your customer relations now in terms of pricing zoho crm starts at a standard of 14 dollars per user build monthly or annually now if you choose to build this monthly it's going to be twenty dollars but you save 34 percent if you choose to build yearly now in the monthly pricing the professional plan costs 35 dollars and the enterprise one costs 50 and the ultimate plan is 65 dollars now in terms of the features you also have things such as macros included in the professional plan and multiple scoring rules in enterprise plans there are quite a few different automations and process management and tools available such as workflow rules email notifications custom functions data review record approval and more and the basic workflow automations and email notifications are available on the standard plan so in this way you can get started with zoho crm i hope you guys found this video helpful if you did make sure to leave a like and subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next video